Look how foggy it is today. You can barely see the water over there. It's so misty. So here we are in my studio and today is a bath bomb making day and the goal is to make four different batches of bath bombs. And I think in order for that to run faster, what I could do is measure out the ingredients for certain groups of them one time and then split up that group as I need them per batch. So for example, I have a group of dry ingredients that is the same for all of my bath bomb batches. I just make a whole lot of it and then take from it as I need, and same with the liquid ingredients. I've never done that before, but now thinking about it, it just makes so much more sense. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to do. At least we're going to attempt that today. I don't know if working a little bit faster affects the bath bomb mix at all and how well it presses, but we'll figure that out when we get there. So I have all of my dry ingredients for all four batches in this bowl and I'm just going to give it a thorough stir so that everything is just one happy mix and then as I make my bath bombs, I'll just add as needed, probably a great way to master batch your bath bombs. You can make a whole bunch of this, store it, label it bath bomb dry ingredients and then take from this as you need it. Now the trick is to mix it thoroughly so that you ensure that every batch gets the exact amount of ingredients that it needs. All right, there's my dry. I'm just gonna put what I need into here and add this to my baking soda. Give this a stir because things are pretty separate. And I'm gonna pour them into here to get the amount that I need for my color. And I'm gonna add this to my baking soda. Now I'm gonna measure out my citric acid. So I'm back and I have my two colors. I have white, I got some brown in there already because I did a test press and all went well with that. And then I have this brown that I made with, what was it, brown, it was a brown, excuse me, chocolate brown hybrid, FDA approved. And this is from Fizz Fairy. And it did come out with a fairly decent brown. Now, whether or not that's gonna make the water turn brown, I'll have to test that <laughs> because that's usually not, um, it's usually not the most desirable color when it comes to bath water, but what I'm basically going to do is um, add some glitter. I'm gonna use my peach nectar glitter that has gold and pink sparkles in it, which I thought was a good combo for this coffee scented bath bomb. I'm making grounded bath bombs, by the way. I didn't even tell you what scent I was working on. And I want, I think I want the gold to be on the white. So I'm gonna start with white and then brown, and then more brown, and then white. Just going back and forth pretty much with my colors. And I'm gonna go over to my bath bomb press and press. Let me give you a better angle. That's a good angle. This is a good angle. Oh, that's really close up, but that's okay. Hold on, I'm gonna go closer. That was fine, perfect. Here's how that looks. I'm just gonna flip it over, tap it, and out comes a beautiful bath bomb. And this is coffee scented, and it looks so, so pretty. I love it. If you love coffee scented things, this is a good bath bomb for you. I'm sure you'll love it. Oh, that smells amazing. And you're sitting right now on my bath bomb tray. <laughs> and this is my secret to getting 
rounded bath bombs after they're dried. About my bath bomb making tips, <laughs> I get messages all the time that the bath bombs aren't working out and no matter what they do, it just isn't coming together or there's just problems throughout the whole bath bomb making process. And to those people that are struggling, I would say the best thing to do is to start off with a recipe that works for someone else. <laughs> and by that, I mean, usually when you see recipes online being provided for free, there's feedback from people who have tried it and either it's good and sometimes it's bad, but you know at least that the creator of that recipe, it works for them. That's your baseline. So you know that this combo of ingredients will create a bath bomb. It's just not making a bath bomb for you for whatever reason. And when you run into that issue where you have a recipe that's getting really good reviews and it works for a lot of people, but it's not working for you, the number one thing is probably the water amount. Because that's the only variable when it comes to making bath bombs. Oh, look how beautiful this is. Oh, it smells so good. So everybody's ambient water, wherever they're making bath bombs, is going to be a little bit different. It might be more humid where you are. You might be running a dehumidifier to the side. And the only thing preventing you from making a great bath bomb from a proven recipe that has made other people's bath bombs is figuring out that water amount and how to adjust that recipe so that it works for your ambient room temperature. And unfortunately, the only way to get to that number sometimes is a lot of trial and error. <laughs> and the thing is about making bath bombs, the more you do them, the more intuitive you become and the easier it is to troubleshoot when your batch isn't going well. I know in the very beginning when I was making bath bombs, it was so panic inducing. <laughs> it was really stressful making bath bombs because you go through this whole prep time of gathering ingredients and combining them only for, for them when they press together to fall apart or when they dry, they fall apart. And making bath bombs is just a whole lot of troubleshooting sometimes. But once you get past that really steep learning curve, you come to a place where it's, it's pretty smooth sailing, I'd say. <laughs> and then from there, when you're able to make bath bombs consistently, then you can start to tweak the ingredients a little bit and try different things. I would say the most important thing to focus on when you're making bath bombs is to just know that it's gonna take a while and you have to be okay with that. And if you're not okay with a few batches failing or more than a few batches failing, then I don't know if bath bomb making is for you because even to this day, I still have batches that fail and I have to figure it out and it's frustrating. I get it, I've been there, but I love it. I love it. The chocolate and white are just sending me, I love it. I'm really anxious to see whether or not my master batching, for lack of a better word, of my wet and dry ingredients is gonna be good or will be will work out for the other three batches that I have planned. So I'm gonna keep pressing these guys and come back to you once they're all pressed. Wait, let me show you one more ball. That looks cool. Oh, see, like look crumbles apart, I'm okay with that, but still a gorgeous coffee bath bomb. Good in there. Okay, so we're now on bath bomb number two, Earth Song, which is gonna be a gorgeous green and yellow bath bomb. This is so vibrant, it's beautiful. Here's the yellow. Oh, and it smells so good. If you're a patchouli lover, then this is the scent for you, it's a patchouli mixed with a lime and a few other things. Beautiful. So for this one, I'm using Rose Dragon glitter, which looks like that on the inside. It's like a beautiful pink with some green in there. Just add the littlest bit of the bio glitter into the mold. And I'm using a medium round mold for those who are curious. And I think I want the yellow to anchor. And then just like with the other, I'm just gonna go between the two colors until we get to the top. And let's see if this presses. There's the top of it. And I showed this trick in the last video, but you can get it loose by going underneath there and then pulling up. And then you have a beautiful, colorful Earth Song bath bomb. So pretty. 
And I'm gonna place them right over in there. All right, so we have bath bomb number three. This is Western Sunset, which is a gorgeous orange and red bath bomb. I'm gonna be using, where is that glitter? It's gorgeous glitter, which is like a magenta and gold glitter. It's called, what is this called? It's called Carnival by Fizz Fairy. Bath bomb making is going way faster using the method of master batching my dry and wet ingredients. That is awesome. So for this bath bomb, we're going to put orange on top of that sparkle. I'm just gonna go back and forth between the two and then press. And you just lift up and you have a beautiful Western sunset bath bomb. That is so pretty. I love that color combo of red and orange together. Western Sunset is a great fruit scent, but there's other things blended in there to make it really, really pretty. We have reached the end of the line here. This is our last batch of bath bombs that we're gonna be making today. This is Cascadia, which is a beautiful blue and green bath bomb. It'll look like a little mini earth once it's pressed. Oh, and it smells so good. Mmm, so it's a bit of pine and vanilla mixed together to form a really refreshing, amazing scent. And for the glitter part, I'm gonna be using Mad Micah's Into the Mystic Glitter, which is this hollow glitter that looks so beautiful. It's gonna look fabulous, I think. I'm so happy with how successful these bath bombs pressed. I love this Into the Mystic Glitter, it's so pretty. Okay, I think I'm going to put it on top of the dark green so that it sticks out more. A little bit green. And then some of this gorgeous blue, and then more of the blue. And then we're going to press, oops. And then we press. And look how beautiful that looks. Oh, I love it. Okay, so we pressed our bath bombs. I'm going to clean up this huge mess that I made <laughs> and come back and sign off. And here are the bath bombs all pressed and ready to begin their drying journey. And hopefully they dry rock hard. <laughs> the Cascadia bath bombs are looking a little rough because the blue part of the bath bomb was a little wetter than I'm used to working with, but I think it'll dry pretty good. Um, but other than that, the rest of the bath bombs are looking fantastic. And I'm so proud of myself for taking the plunge and trying a different technique that will allow my efficiency to be better. So thank you to everyone who has taken the time to give me the tips and tricks that are helping my business so much. You guys are awesome. So this is what I mean by the Cascadia bath bombs looking a little bit rough. The light blue mix was a little wetter than I'm used to pressing and I hope they'll dry nicely. We'll see, I think they will, but they kind of look a little rough. The Grapefruit Sunrise bath bombs turned out so pretty that red and orange together with the magenta glitter on top looks fantastic. And over here we have our Patchouli Lime Earth Song bath bombs looking so fun and they smell so fresh. I really, really love this scent combination of patchouli and lime together. And then over here we have our grounded bath bombs which are coffee scented and, and I'm loving the mix of white and brown together. This white will probably darken because of the high vanilla content in the fragrance oils that I use for this blend, but that's okay. And over here, we have bath bombs that I had pressed earlier a few days ago and they're pretty rock hard. These are probably ready to shrink wrap, but yeah, this is the entire line, guys. I can just imagine myself vending at an event and having all these colorful bath bombs just calling people's names as they pass by. If you guys want the recipe that I use to make these bath bombs, you'll find that on my Patreon. Remember, you know at least one person has had success with that recipe six times over. <laughs> so if you decide to become a patron and you decide to use that recipe for your bath bombs and they're not working out for you, look at your water amount and start adjusting it depending on what your ambient humidity is. Bath bombs can go sideways so fast and I know because it's happened to me. So don't get discouraged, just keep going at it and you'll eventually get there, I promise. 
But if you want to buy these bath bombs and you don't want to bother with making them, you can also do that. These are available on my website, which is linked down below. But I wanted to quickly mention my patrons and thank them for being so amazing, especially my Bubble BFFs whose names are right here. You guys are so fantastic and encouraging. Thank you to each and every one of you. And last but not least, thank you to everyone who has tuned in for every episode of this Vlogmas 2023 series. You guys have been so wonderful with your comments and your thumbs up and you guys are just great and I'm so thankful for you guys. Until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!